We've heard these exact words come from people's mouths. We thought that we'd been left to starve to death in our homes with nobody to hear our cry. When I was in northern Kenya visiting the drought affected regions of Kenya, seeing that people were going through some of the worst things that I'd ever seen in my life. They were eating bitter roots of plants and uh, leaves of trees to try to stay alive. This was back in 2017 when the world was going through one of the greatest famines in the developing world, especially in the Horn of Africa. For me, this feeling of, of horror of what I'm witnessing, and that this is happening, people are starving in front of my eyes. They are, they are dying, not just going through hard times, they are dying in front of my eyes. And I had a politician even explain that to me that was very compassionate and understanding. He said, of the 40 or so regions we have, 20 of them are in famine. What would any other country do if half of their country was in famine? And the reality is that the Kenyan uh, government does not, and it does require external help, people that care and are compassionate, that have the means to be able to make a difference. That stark contrast of, of seeing people that were emaciated through hunger as I was travel through these villages nobody was witnessing this nobody was seeing the the suffering being here in in this moment and, and witnessing this I was overcome with emotion and when you see these images and you see what people go through and the starvation and that they're real people like you and me it was in that community that I something profound happened and that is that I asked the question to the group and I said is there anyone that has not arrived here today that you feel is in a desperate situation and that will suffer or die without our intervention? And they said yes, and they gave me the directions, coordinates, and not far from there was a man that you see right now, and he was, turns out, days from dying from the starvation. He was someone that you would call past the point of no return, if, if you will. We saved so many lives because of this intervention and uh, so many men, women and children, but, but this man, I felt like I'd let him down. And for me, I know that this, this story has a meaning and the meaning and purpose is that what happened will not happen again. We can intervene before these situations happen to people like this, to this man, this man that suffered so greatly. We can prevent these situations. And right now, thanks to King's Ransom Foundation, we are embarking on an amazing mission to shut down starvation. So shut down starvation has two meanings. One is that we should shut down starvation. We should stop it. We should shut off the program. It should not happen. Not today, never. It should not happen. When we have the means, when we have the ability, even if some of us are struggling, we can always find something to give. God bless us, we know that. So shut down starvation, that's the first meaning. But the second meaning is, guess what's happening because of coronavirus? There's certain things that we haven't been able to do during this, uh, the, the COVID or co coronavirus lockdown. But for these people, the, the change is so dramatic that food distributions are not allowed by the government or non-government organizations. So organizations that you would think would come to the rescue are not able to based off the, the laws and just the way that that is operating. And then the government also will not allow people to come to a distribution due to social distancing. People are locked down, no one can hear their cry, they're in their homes, they're suffering. And what can we do about it? Well, we can go door to door delivering emergency food supplies like maize, corn and beans and other types of supplies that we can find and source locally. Tools so that people can harvest, grow their own food, like a hoe and a machete or a shovel and seeds. The seeds that are so important, watermelon seeds. I've seen people that have put their children through school and university from watermelon farming because they can sell them at such a high market value. A single watermelon can be, can be sold for three or four US dollars. And these watermelons grow in drought resistant climates. They're uh, a, a fantastic way for enterprise, yet nutritional value is not as strong, so we want, like to go with sweet potatoes and cassava that are very nutrient dense and are also drought resistant. So we deliver these things to these people so they have the right types of food to eat and the right types of food to sell. So when you give today, you'll be helping families. You can have a look here on the page for the amounts of money and what that purchase is. It is amazing. We are going to touch the lives of over 100,000 people. And all of these things can only happen if we can reach the target. Now the target is $75,000. Now 
the way, how can we help 100,000 people with $75,000? Well, here's how we can do it. My company, Health Secret, has put forward a match and King's Ransom Foundation has put forward a match. So once we make $75,000, King's Ransom is going to contribute $75,000 and Health Secret is going to contribute $75,000. That's a total of $225,000. So when you give a dollar, it becomes $3. You give $100, it becomes $300. Is that not rewarding? It's amazing, right? It matters to me, it matters to my company, it matters to my wife and I, and we're choosing to, to put our money to this mission for God to save lives and to end starvation in this way through seeds, tools, and emergency food supplies. And you can be a part of this mission. Just give generously today to help these people so you can give them not a hand out, but a hand up. We were able to see people um, that were sitting in their homes just beside themselves when they realized someone came to their doorstep and said, we thought that we'd been left to die and you came and you've given us food, you've given us seeds, you've given us tools, you've changed our lives. We can save lives, but we need to act now. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.